Okay, uh, hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at creating uh, a shooting mechanic using line tracers. Uh, now, if you've ever loaded up a first person template in Unreal Engine before, you'll notice that when you shoot, you spawn these balls that kind of just bounce around uh, and don't really do anything. Now, that's really cool if you want to work with, say, if that's what you're going for, for those projectiles. But for most shooter games, and looking at titles like Call of Duty, uh, specifically Call of Duty really, they use a thing called a line trace. Now in Unity it's called a... come on. Uh, it's called something else, but we're not in Unity, so that's why I forget. So we're going to basically have a go at making this. And we're going to do it uh, in a way that allows us to um, we'll go through it step by step, basically. So, um, let me just delete this, and we will rebuild it. So the first thing we need is the event. What's going to cause us to fire? And I'm going to take a uh, left mouse button, and I'm just going to close out my browser so I don't get any more those pings. Anyway, so yeah, left mouse button. Now when that's pressed, we want to do something. And the thing we want to do is a single line trace by a channel. This is basically what does everything when the left mouse button is pressed. So we need a couple of important things here. We need the start location, we need the end location, and we'll pay attention to this, these two, later. So the start location, we can start by getting the actor location. Now with the uh, vector here, we're actually going to break this and off the X we're going to make a vector. And you're going to join the Y up and you're probably looking at that and thinking what the hell, you've broken it down into its axes and you're just going to create it back up again. But we need to do something on the Z axis and, this is, and essentially what we're doing here, when we get this actor location, let's just take a look at uh, the viewport here. When we're getting this actor location, we're getting the midpoint of all of this. So if you see where this arrow begins, that's where our bullet would spawn from if we were to, uh, to to leave that as zero. So what we need to do is we need to move this this location up an amount so it's in line with our gun. And now I found that if you're using everything as default, I found that a value of 60 here seems to work best. Uh, but you may need to play with this value until it's somewhere that you like. So, with that in mind, now let's go off and plug it into our start. That's where the line's going to begin. Now, we need to get control rotation. And off that, we need to uh, get a rotation x vector. And now with this, we're going to add uh, a float of... 2500. Now this 2500 is the distance that the line will travel. Actually, do you know what, let's set this to something like 10 so I can demonstrate this. And if we times these two together, so if we have a vector times a vector, that should give us our end location. And if you change draw debug type to for duration, you'll be able to see those red lines uh, that demonstrate that where by the traces. So we'll come off that screen for a minute, head into the editor and take a look at what we have. Uh, right, okay. I'm looking for it and it's not... Um, my bad. I've done something wrong and it's just a quick case now of figuring it out. Uh, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Rather embarrassing. Get the X vector. Ah, okay, that's where I went wrong. I added 2500, however I should have times it by 2500 and added those two. So I got those pins the wrong way around. Um, the rest of this tutorial, the rest of what I did up there was the same. So I just got my times and my add the wrong way around there. Um, so you can see the code here. We're still getting the control rotation, getting the X vector, 
timesing it by the distance with let's travel. I will drop this back down to 10 so I can demonstrate what I was going to demonstrate. So I'll, again, I'll move that off the screen and we'll take a look now. And, whoa, my camera's gone all weird. Okay, so it's working now. Um, however, these very small lines are because it's a distance of 10. So I don't know how well the camera's going to pick them up. But essentially, we're only casting 10... Uh, I don't know if it's inches or feet or, or 10 units, let's call it 10 units. We're only casting 10 units out ahead of ourselves. So I usually set this to something huge, let's say 25,000. And that basically gives me a really big range on my gun. So as you can see by the red line there, that spawned in the center of me, or at my gun even, and traveled in a straight line to the hit location, like so. So we're actually going to take a look at what we can do with this. It's all cool that we can draw these these debug lines on the screen, but how practical is this really? Now this is where the uh, hit out hit comes in. Now what you want to do off here is you want to break this up. So we're going to break this down into what it's made of. We have the location, we have what it's hit, and these two are what I use the most. So I could, I believe, I can. I don't think I can print that actually. Uh, I can print. I can certainly print the location if I was interested in in seeing where it hit. I could drag out a print string. I could hook up the string to the location. And every time I fire the gun, it will print the coordinates of the location I've hit. Like so, you can see those different coordinates on the screen. They're changing every time I hit somewhere different. So. What we have with this break hit result now is the tool uh, to to handle our next event. And in this tutorial, I'm going to do two things. The first of which is I'm going to spawn a particle emitter. So we're going to spawn an emitter at the location. And obviously, I'm sure you can see here that the location is the location from here. The rotation really doesn't matter, so I'm going to leave it empty. And let's attach an explosion. We could also, just to quickly add on to that, is we could play sound uh, at location, and again the location would feed this with the sound of explosion. Now I will quickly unmute my game. Oops, wrong, uh, wrong thing there. So that we can hear that explosion happening and we can see the effect of it. Okay, so as you saw there, uh, by doing so, we were able to play uh, that sound at that location and to spawn the particle emitter there. So that's cool. So we've, we've learned that we can take the location uh, and we can use that to do things there. Now, what about if we want to kill something? So we have these cubes in the world. These are static mesh actors. Uh, and what I'm actually going to do is I will destroy, I'll, I'll quickly turn them into a blueprint. Uh, let's take this cube for example. I'm going to turn this into a blueprint as if it was an enemy and I'll make it so that when I shoot it I can destroy it. So real quick, let's uh, where's it hidden under? Where have you gone? You know, everything hides when I want to make a video, and then when I'm when I'm making a game, it's all right there where I want it to be. Ah, there it is. Sorry, I'm using the uh, 4.7 engine now, as you may have noticed, and I'm not quite sure too uh, familiarized yet with where everything is. So we're going to call this Cube Blueprint, and in here, we're going to go to the event graph. Uh, we don't need any of these. We'll add our own custom event. So we're going to call this die, and it's simply just going to destroy actor. That's it. Now, what we want to do is take the hit actor, and we're going to cast to cube BP. And we're going to call die. 
So taking a look at what this does, when we hit something, our hit result is going to be broken down into these components, but the location is going to be used to spawn an emitter, the explosion, and to play a sound at the location, the explosion sound. The act that it's hit is going to be cast to QBP, and if it, if uh, if the act that it's hit is the Q blueprint, we will call the function die on QBP. Now I didn't prepare for this, so if this doesn't work, please do uh, do forgive me. Let's take a look. So as you can see there, we're actually destroying those actors. You have no idea how much of a sigh of relief I just br I just breathed uh, in my mind there. So we're that's uh, a quick look at how we can use uh, how we can use the single line trace by channel to create a shooting effect from the center of the screen that spawns an emitter at the location, plays a sound, and also destroys the object. I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions about the code I've used here, about uh, if you have any requests for your Unreal Engine 4 tutorials, any questions, anything, either leave me a, uh, a private message on YouTube or leave a question in the comments. I do try to read all of them and will reply to as many as possible. Uh, I know there aren't that many, but I'll reply to them if I know the answer. If not, sorry, my knowledge is uh, unfortunately limited to. So, yeah, as I said, another tutorial there, guys. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope to see you on the next tutorial.